Good morning, everyone. I'm Michelle. This is Hukulo's Saturday webinar. Um, today, our guest is Karen Newman from Amsterdam. Uh, Karen uh, channels her higher consciousness collective called Theos, and will be um, answering questions for us today. Karen does private sessions, and you can reach her and find out more information at aboutoneness.com. Also, Hukulo is hosting a second uh, gathering, um, February 1st through February 6th. It is for five nights. It is $575. It will be in Sedona, Arizona. And uh, Max and Jim will be teaching a variety of classes. Um, this will include instruction and practice. It's going to be a really amazing event. There are 16 spaces available, and you can find out more about that or sign up um, and get your spot at hukalo.org. Um, also, stay tuned for workshop videos from the previous workshop. They're going to be available for streaming. So for a three month streaming access to all of the classes, um, it'll be $99. And that will be um, coming up on hukalo.org as well. And volunteers are also needed to watch roughly 16 hours of videos <laughs> and write a synopsis in your copious free time or maybe 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 you could break it up between people or you know Marathon. whatever yeah. so um anyway that is vol volunteers are needed to help hukalo and chill that would be the new term right <laughs> grab a bowl of popcorn and uh i don't know hukalo and chill watch it morph into something else <laughs> so today okay today is jd's birthday and i have asked him if he would open um our session with a blessing so oh, nice congratulations jd are you are you ready yeah, and I was so glad that you asked me. So I'm very thankful for the gift of uh, blessing. Oh, that's right. It is, it is your birthday. I knew that. Yeah, you have Happy birthday. birthday. Are Thank you on camera or no? Okay. Uh, I can maybe be on camera. I'm sitting in the car on my way to uh, a dinner with my family. Why not? Do it on. Let's see your face. So. Sakiano Sukutuha ki Aranaya Kasashi Akasa. Noya kasatia niya wakasi, shakia nana, kasushua kata, haya wanasi, shaya kasi, ana wasa, kashia watahi, akushua kari, ana wasa, kasana hiya wasi akisha, noya wasa kia warandia, naya wasa kia sataki, ana wasi shawanahia. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. That was lovely. Do you know what Do you know what language you're speaking? Do you know what uh, where that's from? It's the one language I speak. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so, Karen, I think we can switch to your ca your camera now, okay. and you can go ahead and tell us all about your things. And if anybody has questions, please type Q on the side chat. And I can call on you if there's a lull. Maybe you can squeeze in, but Theos is pretty thorough with the answering. So um, anyway, well, just I'll type you on the chat yeah. side, and I will uh, call on you. OK? OK. All right. Thank you. Thanks, well, thank you thanks for being here. Thanks for the lovely introduction, and thanks for the nice blessing. So. Johannes. Okay. Um, well, everyone, hi. I'm Karen Newman, and I channel uh, my higher self. Uh, they're called Theos, and um, my kind my toes. <laughs> that girl going, oh, oh, <laughs> unbelievable. Okay. So um, anyway, they are they are the God source part of me. So they are as close to source as you can possibly get without 
just being in the nothingness. They're, they're quite high ascended beings. Um, the, I used to say that I was, they were an aspect of my higher self, but they, they came out in a channeling uh, a couple of weeks ago that what they said is that I'm actually an aspect of them, that I am their um, projection and manifestation into this world. So uh, that, that it, I'm getting a lot more information about higher selves and how they work with the incarnation that is you uh, within the world. So if anyone has any questions about that, I'm also anxious to learn what they have to say. But really no questions are off the table. They're, they really talk mostly about soul purpose, soul directions, uh, questions that you'll have about, you know, what is it you you should be doing in your life. Not the question of tell me what to do with my life, but more of burning questions about your own ascension, your own expansion, things that you maybe don't understand about dimensions or um, progression within them. Any questions like that, they're very good with. But truly, you can ask anything. They're not as versed on alien races only because they're they're not incarnated. They're not really focused on that. They're um, they're you know non physical. So. But there is some things that they do know about the ETs. Uh, <clears throat> but as I said, there that's more Max's and uh, Jim's domain than, than mine. So, But we can get started. And any questions you have, I'm excited to uh, hear the answer as well with you. So much love to you. Okay. Do they want to come through with a message before they begin? I don't know. Questions? Sometimes. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. So Okay. It'll be, All right, let's see. We'll see what It'll happens. Surprise. Okay. Right. I don't usually talk to them beforehand. They don't really tell me what's happening. So, <laughs> okay. But what I will do is I'll ohm and then you'll you'll know and and my eyes will open and and they'll say that we're here and uh, and that'll be that. So, I, most of you've seen them before. Chiaria Santia, we are canti, Tilariama, Shodampa, Sicalia Sita, Oraya Legama, Ticasia, Durando, Palacia, Chiandio, Barasio, Maria Cora, Tilaria Si. He We are Theos, and we thought we would serenade you first with a song from our language, our Good. light language. It was basically a greeting and celebration of everything and everyone. To it was a declaration of the wisdom and the knowing and the love of the divine and our appreciation of it. And it is a way that we celebrate who we are and what 
we know to be true. And we do that quite often in that way. So. We'd like to talk to you today, <clears throat> before we go any further, about your inner workings as far as your inside knowing. And what we mean is that everything that you need to know is inside. It is particularly spaced here. It's not here. And we would like you to start thinking about dropping your awareness into your heart center. And it's not your physical heart, but it's really your spiritual heart. And from there, you need to start to listen. And from there, you need to start to see. And from there, you need to start to understand. There is a lot of confusion about higher knowledge and how it comes into your system. It really doesn't come in through here. It comes in through here. And when you are trying to understand and you're straining with your brain and things aren't making sense, it's because you're really not listening with the right, the right organ. You're, you need to listen and you need to feel from here. So we would say to you, one of the things that we would recommend that you do is that every day, and especially before you're going to be reading something or meditating, that you physically drop your consciousness down into your heart. And it is imperative that that is. And when you meet another person, yes, greet them with your eyes, greet them with your mouth, but really reach out to them from here and try to feel them from this space because this is really the center. When they talk about being heart-centered, it's not a joke. It's not a ism. It's a real thing, being heart-centered. This is your center of your soul and of your being. So that's our recommendation. We would just say to you, take a deep breath, and just say, my consciousness comes through my heart. My love comes through my heart. My seeing comes through my heart. And just visualize the part of you that is sensory to move down. And then just let that open. Let that chakra open. The chakra color is green. Just picture it opening so that when you're interacting, it's coming from here. So... That's really all we have to say about that, but it's a very important thing. And it will give you some clarity to perceive higher knowing. Higher knowing cannot be understood through your brain. The peace that you seek, the knowledge that you seek, the love that you seek can only be here. Your brain is not capable of having the same knowing. It's too much, it's too big. But here is the source of infinite everything. This is your way in. So that's what we have to say about that. So we're happy to answer any questions that you would have. And namaste, it's so good to be with you again. We love you. Thank you, Theos. Uh, Victor. I have a question. Victor Leon has a question. I have a question. April. Is that Victor? April, we believe Victor was going to go first. Is that correct, okay. Michelle? Yes. And then L, and then April. Victor? We believe Victor will go first. Our knowing Victor. does not say yeah. Victor will go first. Well, Victor wanted to know is who in the fifth density. What, what was the question? He wanted to know if he is in fifth density. Well, everyone is in the process of progressing into fifth density. Uh, fifth density is a little bit different than third density. And you will know by the manifestations that are coming to you if you are able to think something and it instantly manifests. We would say yes. If you're living heart-centrically, then yes, you're in fifth density. We would say that you vacillate between the two, that every one of us has 
the ability to move there. As a, as a culture, we are not all there yet. And there's very few of us that can maintain that density all the time. So do you believe you're in fifth density, Victor? Says, okay, thank you. I don't know if he can um, unmute. It's very difficult to hear you. I don't know if he can unmute. Okay. He said, okay, thank you, yes. Yes, he does feel that way. Perfect, thank you then. very much. L is next. We, sure, we would just say something about fifth density. If you have to question if you're there, we would say you're probably not there. It would, it would come with a lot of knowing and it comes with a lot of awareness. It comes with an ability to see things from a very broad perspective. Not the broadest perspective, but there are moments when all of us are in fifth density. There's moments where we're really in third. So it's, it's a vacillation, but uh, you will know when you're there and it won't be so much of a question then. But the, the signs are that humanity is moving. We will join fifth density more cumulatively than just one person at a time. So there will be a moment when we are all there versus just one being being there or two beings being there. So. What was the next question? Uh, Elle had a question. Yes. Elle? Hello. Um, Hello. Blessings and Blessings. namaste. Um, I want together uh, today to expand a little bit on the subject of time mm. um, meaning uh, meaning that time goes uh, in the now and in this moment vertically and parallel it comes uh, with uh, energy from the future so we have two lines that come together um, defining time and um, would you would you give some opinion and maybe together to expand on this uh, belief of time? Well, time is an actual thing, but it is only relative within a density that is ruled by it, like ours, like the third, the fourth density. We are subject to time. There is progression. It, our, our world in a dualistic world is also subject to time. Time does have an out a little bit within our existence. The more you're in the moment, the more you're absent from time. You, we are in what you would call sort of a quantum time where there is no time. But that is because we're not physical and because of the, the density where we are. But in your density, there is time. Now, your physicists, and we also will say, there's a concept is all time at the same time, which means that everything is also now. But you can focus your consciousness on all of these different nows, and you can literally move between them and choose what part of now you want to experience. It's not that easy for you or for anyone to just jump, but it is possible. Choices move you. How you live your life moves you. The things that you do moves you. Events move you. But you're not so much at the point where you can say, oh, I want to go back and be five years old again. You don't have the ability to, to move your mind into that. When you do leave this body, you will be able to go back. You will be able to go forward. So you'll be able to move between the different moments. But right now, on a linear way, you are experiencing a progressive unfolding. We are streams of consciousness of the divine when the world was created and not just we say the world but when all was created there was an exhalation of all that is into being it had been there before but it had all been concentrated into one thing you can picture it like a white ball and when all that is wanted to experience what it did is it created a sort of vacuum and it ex ex exhaled or it breathed out or there was a big bang, you can say. And all of this that is started streaming out. So you are in your own stream of being. You are one stream of existence of the all that is. So 
we, we're going to we're going to diver, uh, diverge for just a second. When people say I am God, yes, you are God, but you're not all that is. Yes, you are one stream of exhalation, and in your stream of exhalation is all that will and can be and should be, and all the possibility of you. Yes, and as you are born, you have a progression of life. So you will be born, you will live, and you will at some point leave your physical form. You will not die as a soul, and you will also stay in your own stream and continue on. So within your stream, all the possibilities of all of you, all that is you, will continue on. So you are in this stream of 2017 with the 7th of October and in this moment having this conversation. Um, maybe I, something else. I, I would probably want to expand on this and uh, say that um, this um, stream of consciousness you mentioned that um, I would um, project that comes vertically to us throughout our um, ch heart chakra maybe and all this information is an infinite choice of numbers so I can define this uh, timeline uh, maybe that is the time that comes from the future because there are all these infinite possibilities that we can recreate in the now and it's up to us to choose only one because only one is possible in this moment right so that's why i would um, agree with uh, with uh, the definition that time exists uh, in two uh, dimensions for us one is the now and the other is the future that comes in the now through the stream of consciousness with the infinite choices and possibilities and uh, we have those and uh, we don't know maybe about them we don't think about them we only act on the emotion or on, on the on the vibe we catch from this stream of consciousness from the future and we create it in the now so maybe this is very good and important for everyone to to just uh, consider as an option for um, accepting time in in a, a bit different and interesting way. Well, if you think about stream of consciousness, because you're in your own stream of consciousness, when they, when they say you're in your own universe, you are your own universe. What you are is, if you were to to imagine everything streaming out and it streams out in stream but you're in your own stream literally so you are in fact in your own universe you're in your own thing but you know we're, you're speaking specifically of consciousness of a soul but if you think about the consciousness of a chair the chair doesn't have the same experience of consciousness as you it, but it is still a created thing it is still a manifestation it is still part of the all so what you're saying is, we would say more that thing instead of things sort of hitting you in a, you know, coming from the side or perpendic perpendicularly, that more that it's all potentially there. And if and if it helps for you to visualize it that way, if that feels good for you, then that's that's perfectly fine. Um, but we would say that everything exists within your stream for the taking, and that's where a choice comes in. And so with every choice you are in fact also creating streams and those streams continue. So there is infinite possibility. There is in every infinite possibility creates another infinite possibility. And so there's this question of when will time end? Time in and of itself is just the experiential linearity of being within this plane of world, within this manifestation of physical reality time is that but outside of it you're still within a stream and you but then you have even more access to more things because your ability to perceive on many more dimensions and many levels will expand exponentially you still might have limitations only because of where you are in your progression but that's a totally different conversation but within when when people talk about time and all these things they're really only talking about it for their own perspective and that's perfectly good because that's where you are but just realize that everything that is is within its own stream is in existence and there's no real limitation 
once you are out of your body, unless you go into another body, you will be freed from this time thing. This time thing is only part of this world because this is how this world is set up. The part of the game is the duality. The part of the game is time. The part of the game is you have a limited amount of time yes. to, to grow and live. But so we think your explanation is fine. And we would say that it is specifically catered to a living, breathing human being, but it's not necessarily all things because not everything is within time. Things are, there's a lot of things that are without of time, as we are out of time. We are not in a time. So for us, everything is not only now, but everything is all the time all around us. There is nothing that isn't within our grasp or within our experience. But when you're born into a body, you have what we would say is the gift of singular focus. You have the ability to just experience this. If you were experiencing all like we were, then you wouldn't be having a human experience. You would be having a non-physical experience because that is what the body gives you. It gives you that limited ability to see. You don't see over all spectrums of light. You don't hear in all spectrums of sound. And you definitely do not perceive in all spectrums of multidimensionality. Yes. As we um, move and we progress, we will be able to experience more. As your density changes, you'll be able to experience more. But even within fifth density, you're not all-knowing. You're not all-being. You yeah. just have a heightened and, and you have more. You have more that you're able to experience. And also more, you're able to be more heart-centric. Um, yes, maybe what I see as a, a positive uh, thing here is that even though the limitations to duality and uh, the low vibration we live in, uh, we have the chance to create. Of course, and you do. It's just a delayed. It's a delayed manifestation. Yes, with a bit uh, uh, slower speed. Yes. So <laughs> the, you know, the thing yes. is, it's it's actually quite good. I mean, well, it's good, and it it is, and it we'll say it is, and it's good, but. We came in this world as a species. Now, we think individually like Karen thinks about herself and Michelle thinks about herself and you think about yourself individually because that's sort of all we've got in this, in this world. But if you think about humanity as the whole, and that's what also happens when you move into fifth density. It stops being about you, me. It's always us. So if you're thinking about everything, this world as it was with its duality, you came in to have these limitations, to have the experience of what would it be like to not know who you are, to not be able to instantly manifest. Instant manifestation is pretty easy, you know? Um, to not have that knowledge, to have this feeling of separation. When you go into fifth density, you will know that you are part of oneness. That will never be a, a doubt. So part of that is this, and that's this game that we're playing here. Humanity has sort of come to the point where they're like, okay, we get it. Duality sucks. We don't like it. Let's move on. So that is sort of where humanity is at the moment. But it's individuals will progress, but it's more that everyone has to catch up because there's no point in, in just one or two people going into oneness other than for spiritual awakening. That's great. But to have a society, to have a world that operates like that. Yes, to make the most to of it. There, to make the most of it because yes. it will be much different when everyone knows it. And then the only thing you're really doing for each other is to make sure that that person, the people around you are having the best experience possible. And then they're able to do whatever it is that they need to do. With, with no limitation to it. And then it'll be a completely different world. And, uh, and no strings attached. No strings attached, exactly. No strings attached. But we think that your explanation is very, very good. We would just say, just expand it a little bit to realize that there's a lot of other things that are part of creation that are not just human or not just beings, not just breathing beings, but there's all kinds of other things that are part of it as well. But they're also part of that stream and they also have their own stream and they're also individual consciousness 
uh, expressions is the best way to say it. Yeah, it's just that we focus on humanity right now because, well, because that's they're we are. the most, the yeah. most. Uh, well, it's the most tangible, and it's what we one. know. You know, we're not really thinking about critical. the life of an amoeba, but oh, yeah. that amoeba has its own stream. And and the, and when we talk about consciousness of singular celled beings and things like that, they're not thinking of, you know, what gourmet food can I eat? Their 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 consciousness <laughs> is much different. They have a different level. Um, so we were talking to someone just two days ago about the body and we said the body is conscious and the person was asking, well, how conscious is the body? And, and we said, well, the cells are conscious in that they know what they need to do and they have a very high um, connection to all that is without, without the emotion of it. Does that make sense? They're conscious in the way of that they know that they're a muscle and that they know that they're their job is to do this. And they know that they need nutrients and they respond to positive stimuli and they respond to a positive thought. But the finger is not thinking, oh, I'm going to go you know, to the store and leave the body there. The body's not gonna walk away from you, but the body is working in conjunction with you and is, and is part of you. It's a projection of you. It's, it's, it, is, it is your vehicle for this, for this incarnation, so. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. April is next with a question. April. Hello, April. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? No, oh, you can. Okay. Bless you. And greetings. Greetings. I would like to know my sole purpose well we would never tell you your sole purpose we would say that is for you to find out your truest purpose is to be happy and to be expressive of what is within you but as far as your soul that's your that is everyone's purpose but we could never tell you directly what you should do in your life what do you find you. exciting to do what do you find exciting to do Taking in the pain of others and releasing. You find pain exciting? <laughs> just releasing it from others. Well, we would say to you, people have to release their own pain. What you can do is hold the space for them where it's safe to do that. But we wouldn't ask you to take other people's pain on. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't, that you don't need to take have, people's I pain. I have done that. My heart hurt, and uh, I couldn't understand it for a while. Now I do, but that's what was happening, and it stopped. But every once in a while, I'll feel it about someone. Well, you don't have to take someone's pain on to help them. What you can do is help them release their pain and hold the space for them of love and beckon them to that, oh. and that space of health and beckon them to that. But we wouldn't say to you by, if someone is ill, that you get ill. Oh. That doesn't make any sense. And that's not oh. necessary. So we appreciate your okay. desire to help, but don't take someone's pain on. Do you understand? It was happening for quite a while, and I really felt good about it afterwards when it had left me. When the pain left you. Yes. Yes. Well, we would just say to you that again, you know, it's, it's lovely to help people. We wouldn't say to you to take on their ills. You don't need to do that. What you what you only need to do is again hold the space for them in, in love and in relief. But yes. Thank you. I welcome. appreciate your help. Thank you. So an addendum to that, Theo, so some people would consider themselves empaths. Well, that's feeling pain. 
yeah, it's, it's different. That's what I was feeling she was talking about. Do you are you an empath, April? Yes. Yes. Well, feeling the pain yes. is different. Feeling it is different than taking it on. And if you do feel it, that's you can feel it, but again, you can take the idea and you can talk with your guides as opposed to just taking the pain on or feeling it, that you can also receive information about it, you, that you can sense that person's pain, that you can have an understanding of what it is, but that you don't have to actually physically feel it. And that comes with just adjusting your instrument in the way that it feels. A lot okay, of people, a lot of people that are impasse, they have things come to them, and but without the knowledge that they also have the ability to instruct the universe that brings it to them how they want to experience it. You should never be a victim of the universe and what you're experiencing. You should learn the mastery of the gifts that you have. And the first thing that is part of the mastery is the control of it. The, the management of it. And that can be done in many different yes. ways. That can be done by speaking to an angel or speaking to your guides and setting up what we would call a gatekeeper and say that you are open. That First of all, the first thing that any teacher and any person who is working with other people as a spiritual leader, spiritual guide, spiritual teacher, a empath, a healer, the first thing that you first should do is you should decide if you want to do this work if this is what you want to do it should never be forced upon you and, and we question very very much the people that believe that they are being forced to be servants of the universe that is that's maybe true but we don't think that that's really the way it is however i feel like <laughs> sorry i feel i chose it of course. So if you chose it, the other thing is that you would say to the universe, I am willing to do this work because I know I want to be of service. And that willingness to be of service also comes with having the ability to master what you're doing. So the next step would be accepting the, 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 the decision to do the work. If you don't want to do it, you can also say, you know what, I'm busy with my own life. This is not really what I want. I'm not interested in being an empath. I'm not interested in, in feeling other people's stuff, and I'm not interested in really tuning into them. There's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. When you do that, or if you I say, okay, I'm, one second, please. When you do that and you take on the work, or you do that and you push away the work, then what you say is you take a gatekeeper, such as Archangel Michael or whomever you feel comfortable with, whatever energy you feel it would be good for you to work with. And you say to that being, I am asking you to be my gatekeeper and I do not want anything coming through in this way. I don't want to all of a sudden be overcome with someone's pain. I do not all of a sudden want to have someone's headache. I don't want to feel the pain that they have. What I would like, unless you want that, but what you can say is what I would like is to have the information that that exists to get a clear stream of knowledge on what it is, why it is, and how it can be eased. That's, that's the thing that you can do, and that's the mastery of it. There's no point in someone else's pain or the pain of the world knocking you down so hard that you can't even function. That doesn't make you good for anyone, and it doesn't make you good for yourself. So... Be in charge of, of yourself, be in charge of the input and the impetus that you get from the universe. You, it's perfectly within your right. A lot of the time when you get those first pangs, you know, your first pangs of information, it's just the wake up call to let you know that you do have that ability. You can choose to embrace the ability or you can choose to shut it down, but you can also say how it does come to you. So we wouldn't recommend there's people that have so much impetus, so much things that they do not know how to, to be the master of it. And that really doesn't help them in the long run. It, it becomes sometimes a problem for them. And people that are mentally ill definitely don't have the filter to shut it down. So we don't want anyone to be driven past their own comfort point. If anything, the, the information you get 
you should be able to use it to not only help other people, but it will also help you. So, do I you have appreciate any about that. that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. That is actually very interesting. I have a sidebar on that. Well, we, because we, I, we, we spoke a little bit to you. Michelle. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I had a conversation with Hathors via Jim, and they were kind of seemed disappointed that I wasn't empathing because I put it up at a no thank you sign, <laughs> a well, diverter. You know, that's fine, but it's not for the Hathors to, to tell you what to do. If you are ready, then you will choose it, but you may never be ready, and that's 100% okay. It used to just like be, you know, suddenly knock me over with somebody else's or the collective's else's stuff. So I was like, you know what? Only this person, this person, and this person. And if it's an emergency. <laughs> well, Karen has the same. She has, she has, because she's a psychic and she's a medium and she has said, I don't want any contact with any beings while I'm in the shower. Mm -hmm. I don't want any contacts with any beings when I'm, you know, asleep. I don't want any contacts with my animals. So she put up some some major uh, criteria, and that's per, that's hundred percent within her right. It's hundred percent within right. your right. It's right. your time. It's your uh, experience. And if the goal is to to teach and to serve and to help, then there's no right way that you get the information and the fact that the information is sort of there floating ready to come to you doesn't mean that it has to knock you out and ruin your day or, or make you in inoperable if you are if you're snowed under with a migraine headache because of the tensions that are going on outside how are you serving anyone no, it's, it's hard a detriment to, to you when you're exactly. really super sensitive. You're so sobbing. if you're super sensitive, the goal should be the mastery of the sensitivity and to be in charge of it and to ask for it to come in such a way that mm -hmm. it is you're capable of dealing with it and you're able to not only deal with it, but deal with it in an objective way that doesn't throw you under the bus. There's no point. Right. There's no point. So that 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 could be a it can be a cross to bear for a lot of people, but it really doesn't have to be. It should be a useful thing. It should be something that you can take into consideration. But getting a list in your mind of this is what's going on. This person is this. This person is that. We would say maybe in the very beginning, it's important to for someone to feel the pain so they have the empathy, mm -hmm. so you can create the empathy within you. But empathy is also a choice. So once that empathy has been stimulated, we know that if we tell you that this person across the street is suffering from, you know, cancer and they're in a lot of pain and they need comfort, we don't need to let you feel exactly what they're feeling so that you right. can run to them. So, right. So. Beautiful. And that's Thank also you. part of mastery as well. And that's, that's a progression too of being a little bit more in tune and a little bit more conscious to know yeah. how to handle everything. Yeah, when you go from being totally great to a suicidal depression suddenly, you think, I, I, I finally caught on and said, oh, that's not mine. <laughs> right, right. And that's also, that's the other thing. That's the other thing, too, is that, you know, if you, if you are feeling and experiencing that, that pain and those things, it, it does have, it can run your body down. And that's not the goal either. Correct. So. You can know that it's not yours, but if you're in a ball for three days and you're not able to come out of your house, then your life suffers, and that's absolutely not the point. Yeah, thank you for expanding on that idea. Cami has a question. It does have to do with aliens who can choose to answer it or not. Okay. I, I will read it. You will listen. Um, she's joining us from YouTube, so I'm not sure she heard your intro. But we have... Have we humans become part of the Zeta Collective mind because of the crossbreeding and the Yale, the creation of the Yale hybrids? Is that a question? That is a question. Have we humans oh, become? Have we, the, have we oh, humans we become heard part we of have. the Zeta Collective? Well, we think that that answered the question. Well, we will just say this: that any kind of 
genetic DNA that you have with another race, another species, does give you a sort of through line into that consciousness. You can sort of follow your own DNA to, to any knowledge that you would want. And, and, and that being said, you can also tap into the unconscious collective, or the conscious collective. We say unconscious because, the, but the conscious collective, you can tap into any information. Have we become really part of that whole uh, consciousness? Not yet. In a way, yes, because there are genetic links, there are DNA links, but until it becomes something really conscious that you, that you don't have a question about until you really know that that's the case, then we, I, we would say no. On some levels, yes, if you really wanted to sit down and meditate and you are a hybrid of that race and the, you know, that is coming in, then you will be able to tap in much easier than, say, someone who isn't. But as a collective consciousness with, within humanity, are we really yet? Not quite. Not yet. Do we, we want are, to we're be? We're too dense. Well, it really depends because, you know, the Zetas came in and you can say what you want about... Uh, abductions and things like that and, and that's we know that in the earth world that's a big subject and, and there are very many opinions but you do choose on every level to have an experience yes and there are those that say that in fact the zetas are the future humans and that the reason that they're coming back to take the dna from humans is because they're trying to save their current selves so yes. There's several learnings that can happen from that. We can learn now as a humanity to not go so far into genetic manipulation that we push ourselves to a point where we can no longer reproduce and that we need to do this in the future. That's, that's one learning that we can take from it. And then the second is that anybody that they really do interact with on some level has made an agreement. So the inability of the Zetas to actually feel and experience and understand what they're doing and how that really affects humanity is, is, is their own, you know, their, we would say they are not such a high consciousness in that they're technologically advanced, but they're not that spiritually advanced. Because if you're that spiritually advanced, you wouldn't have this kind of interaction with beings. So what if, what if one has DNA connections and is experiencing their consciousness, but would choose yes, we, not yes. to, would not like to? Well, if you have the understanding of why they're doing it, then a lot of times, in fact, you would. You have seen a an, an complete turnaround in the idea of abduction. Now it's not called abduction anymore. It's visitation. I see. So a lot of those programs have come to their conclusion. Some of them have come to the conclusion in the fact that there are more willing participants than there are unwilling, unconscious participants. The, the people that are participating now have a much more clear idea and much more conscious about it. Even if it's just an inner knowing, look at the amount of hybrid mothers that are here on earth that know that they have hybrid children or people that have hybrid fathers. We hear the animals moving around in the background. But there's a lot more consciousness that goes with it. So we would say to this individual, what was her name? Uh, that was Cammie. Cammie, Cammie if you are specifically fine. having experiences, then we would say genetically you're very linked. Humanity being completely conscious of it, well, that's absolutely not the case. And that's everyone knows. It. People don't know it every day. They're not walking around collect, kind of, uh, being part of that higher consciousness. Right. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Carol McLaughlin um, would like to know if there is a message for her. Yes. But we are not going to tell. No, we are joking. That was funny. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, let us tune into you. We would like some more specific question, but we will see what we can do because we're not really predictors of the future. So, we would just say whatever course that you're on right now is the right one to be on. That's very general, but the path that you are taking is leading to your own expansion. 
uh, the, the, the point is not to question it so much and just be in the moment and trust that every step that you take is putting you forward. Um, we do see that uh, there is, can be a little bit more commitment to the internal work and not just the knowledge work, which is what we spoke to about in the very beginning, that you're thinking a lot mentally and we really want you to start feeling here from the heart because that knowing that you get will will be much more clear and you'll have a much more settled feeling about what you're doing but you are you are definitely moving forward so keep going that's how we'd say and just try to open your heart more towards love and love and interaction with other people and don't be surprised maybe when you're interacting with them that they're not quite getting you but that's okay. It's more important that you start to feel them. And we just also see that around you in your own personal life, the people around you are not as awake as you're starting to be. So, but don't be, don't be uh, discouraged by that. Everyone will get there. So just know your own truth and keep going with that. So, Thank you. Uh, Pete has a question. Hello, Pete. Next. Hello, hello. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have a question. Uh, based on my earlier discussion of what you mentioned about was not focusing too much on the headset and focus more on the heart. Yes. Well, we were speaking not specifically of a headset, but your ears and your eyes and your yeah. brain knowing. Yes. So what is your question? Um, my question is, is that I've been so much in the process of connecting into my heart center. Mm -hmm. And when I do so, my whole head space and my ego start to frazzle and start to focus on me with either a chain or a cord or whatever it is. And they try, it tries to pull me back into the headspace and this is important. Uh, you should listen to your headspace because you have more decisions and based on work or principles, etc. We understand. So there's a sort of a, uh, a pull to, to deal with 3D versus dealing with things from the heart center. Is that correct? What yes. You mean? And when you, talk, when you talk about practical things like walking your dog or making your dinner you prefer to sit in the ego side of your of your existence versus the heart side is that correct yes and it, ha and it just gets to it's and i work towards to letting go of those things because mm -hmm. they, they don't well we would say to you it's not so much letting go of things but it's integration of them and the integration is by there's a dog grabbing the arm of Karen. Do you see? I pulled the shirt off of her. So that's funny. One moment. Things are about letting go, and we're going to let go of the dog who's trying to get our attention. There's integration, and, and when, you, when you talk about living from your heart center, it doesn't mean that you move into sort of a foo foo, flighty, unable to function kind of love bliss state which is not a bad thing at all but there's a there's a there's a, a part of you that can approach your life with an integrity that has to do with being in your heart the ego will tell you oh you don't want to be you don't want to be living what are you going to do when you have to you know have a have a discussion with someone and and you, you have to make decisions. But really, living from your heart helps you to do those things in, in an even more um, pure way, a more fulfilled way, a more full way. For instance, when you take, as we have this tea here, and you hold this cup, you're not just drinking your tea, but you're... you're savoring the moment of being in this place where you have tea, you're appreciative of the fact that you have this glass, you have this 
water that has made this tea, that there's a person that has made this tea bag and you're thankful for that. And then you drink the tea and you experience the magic of the body utilizing the nutrients that are coming from the water, the soothingness that's coming from that tea. And as you feel it go down into your body and affect you, you can be in an appreciation of it. It doesn't mean that you, what we, we have a better term, 3D versus 5D in, in your actions is conscious action versus unconscious action. That's the difference. It's the only difference. And it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to function. The, the ego mind is now a little bit afraid of letting go of that control. And when it lets go of that control, it doesn't know what's going to happen. But we will tell you, you're not going to lose yourself. You're not going to be less yourself. You're going to be more yourself. You're going to be more Pete, not less Pete. The ego really doesn't have anything to worry about. So we would say to you, maybe sit down and have a conversation with your ego and just tell it it's going to be okay. And that maybe you can suggest to your ego that you just try living more from your heart. But if it's not okay, you can always go back to not living from your heart. But your ego self is only afraid of letting go of control because the ego has served you very well. It has kept you safe. You know, it has allowed you to be in this world, but now the world is expanding and it's allowing for even more. And more is being the appreciative love self that you are. So the ego doesn't have anything to worry about. You can even say, you know, because within your 5D, your ego isn't completely gone. So it doesn't have to be worried that it's kicked out yet. When you get a little higher, maybe you can leave the ego behind. But the ego does come with you. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, so Pete's I... ego, don't worry. He's not going to completely abandon you. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, my next question would be that I've been, I've been so, I've been working on uh, ways to help my, set my own telepath, hone in my telepathic abilities and I do so so I can connect to my astral wife and my hybrid children uh, more and more so to the point that I can see them um, in my perception in this reality. And there are some, po like only recently that I have been uh, experiencing this whole blockage of not able to perceive or sense them and it gets to the point where I struggle to connect to them. I was wondering if I could ask for assistance with my higher self if it knows anything about it or maybe with your well we would just say to you that your we wouldn't want you to define the way that you connect because it's a little bit of an iffy thing when it comes to information coming into your being. So we would just say to you that you're, you're asking for a very specific manifestation. You want to be able to see them with your physical eyes. Is that correct? Are we correct in that? Yes. Okay. And also in my third eye. Okay. Well, within your third eye, we would just say that sometimes it has a lot to do with your own ability to perceive, whether you're clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudient. You have stronger tendencies within a certain spectrum of knowing. And that's just a talent that other people have. You can develop it, but it isn't instantaneous. And some people have more ability in different ways. What we would say to you, we know that you want to see them but it would be very good if you can feel them, if you can sense them, and if you can communicate with them. And via those things, you can do that via writing. You can do it via telepathy. You can do it via just feeling. So we would say to you, don't try to define the exact way that you connect. See what starts to happen. See the direction with which that information starts to come. And then follow that stream. 
And if another time it's another way, follow that stream. But it, we will say for you, in this time, it's probably not going to be just one way until you perfect the ability. When Karen channels into us, and this is why I will tell you this, when she channels into us, it took her a long time to realize how to really get to us when she started channeling. She always had a communication with us, but as far as physically getting to us, and we don't mean physically, but the feeling of being with us, at one moment she got the image of a triangle and as soon as she closes her eyes now, she knows how to visualize that triangle and she knows how through the the breath and through the tone to follow that. And it, it, for us, we, we say it's sort of a gateway to us, but she knows that that's there and she knows how to get there and she's very confident with that. But she, it took her a long time to find that. So we would say to you, it's a matter of trial and error and don't give up, don't give up. And also too, when you do make connection, it's very good for you to say to her, to say to them, I am open to receiving your communications so that you're not always having to go out and find them. And because they are on a higher density, they will know much better in a lot of ways to get to you. So ask them to give you some sort of signal that awakens you to their wanting to connect. But this is really a negotiation that has to happen between you and them. It's not something that we can zap you and, and make it clear for you. We wish we could, but we can't. So this is also part of your journey and part of your own expansion. And then when you make that connection and when you are able to do that, then it's very real for you. We can do connections, but it doesn't make sense for us to connect to them because it's you that needs to connect to them. So keep trying and keep practicing. And if you feel on a certain day that it's a tele telepathy thing, then follow the telepathy. If you feel the next day that it's more through hearing or, or feeling within your body, then, then, then expand that. But don't say that it's only going to be one way or another thing. We think it's going to be very difficult for you to see them with your physical eyes. Because one, they're not physical in this realm. So you're asking your eyes to do something that's very difficult. You'll see them more from your inner knowing and from your third eye than you would through your physical eyes until such a time that they are here in this, this realm. But at this moment, they're not. So does that well, help you? Thank, well, thank you for at least zapping some advice. We, we will zap advice all day long. Feel free. Thank you. We would, we would we want to say also to you that it's also important what you're putting within your physical body. And that information just came just as we were about to go. So make sure that you're eating clean food, drinking clean water, and not clogging it up with a lot of sugar and uh, processed foods and things like that. The cleaner that you are on the inside, the more open you can be. Limit your consumption of animal products completely if possible and to, yeah. so that you have a heightened awareness you need high energy vibrational food and the low the things like that are low energy like potato chips and french fries and junk they're very good for grounding but they're not very good for heightened awareness yeah i'm, I'm starting my home fasting there you um, go. for a few days there you go see you already have the inner knowing Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Bascoms. Hello. Hello. This Hello. is Bascoms. Uh, really excited and honored to uh, chat with you, Theos. And we are very excited and honored to speak with you as well. Thank awesome. You. Um, my question is, uh, does regular cannabis use have any impact on spiritual ascension? Well, there's no easy answer for that because in, when you are smoking cannabis, you believe that you're much more expanded. And in a way you are, but in a way it can also become very limiting because it becomes a dependency on not so much on the actual herb or the physical dependency, but the mental dependency on that's the way to get there. Um, Karen did ayahuasca and had the most amazing experience you can ever hope to have. And she's wondered, did she need to do it again? 
because it was an opening for her that she had yet to have experienced in such a dynamic way. But we will tell you that not so long ago she was meditating and at one moment she literally fell over in her bliss and was right there again. So there are other ways to do it. Cannabis in and of itself necessarily wouldn't hurt you, but we would say it's not the best path in that it doesn't take you as deep as you really, really can go. And you can go much deeper through meditation. So, And, and is that partially because uh, it is putting a lot of focus on the third eye um, rather than the heart chakra? Well, it's, it's, it's disorienting your body. There is a lot of noise in our background, and we do apologize. The animals are playing with each other, and they're having a grand old time. But it, what it's doing is it's, it's taking you, it's, it's, it's literally altering your physical state. It's just the same as, well, it's not the same as alcohol, but it is, it is, it's, it's lifting you to a certain point, but it's not taking you further. So we would say it's a good awakening for letting you know that the ability to do it is there, but you can go much farther and you think you're there. You think, well, we, we want to go back to the example of, the, of Karen with ayahuasca because even with the ayahuasca, she got to a certain point and she thought, wow, this is really it. But then when she had her meditation, she was specifically told, you can come further. And there was nothing other than being in a very deep samadhi state. And the samadhi state kept expanding and it kept expanding. So it's not that cannabis will hurt you because we don't believe that at all. And we know that cannabis is very medicinal and it can help in a lot of ways, very many ways. And, um, we believe very much in CBD oil and, and all of the properties that come with it and all the cannabinoids and all those things and how those affect you in a good way. On a smoking way, you have to really understand that you are smoking fire into your lungs and you are damaging them in that way. You are giving impetus to your body to be disconnected in a way. Again, not a terrible bad thing, but if you really want to talk about going further, that's really going to come when you learn to meditate and really get still and really go in. So it will take you to a certain place, but it might trick you into staying there. You can go much further. Okay, yeah, I, I understand. Do you, do you understand what you're saying? So yeah. yes, to feel relaxed, to have whatever... The, the properties of it you want are, then we would say it's good for that. But we would say you can go much further. Okay, you can always thanks. go much further. So I understand that. I think that that's probably true as well. I built up some habits around smoking, and also some. To your point, um, it does it does really open my kind of uh, what I would say a third eye, and that does make me feel. Well, like use it. Use it as re realize one one moment. We are going to talk to this animal because he's very disturbed at the moment. So one moment, we are going to mute our mic and, and talk. <laughs> what we just said was, Tommy, be quiet. That's what we said, So, just so you know. But the cannabis in and of itself has, a, 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 there he goes. He has that has a teaching ability. It's teaching you that there's something going. It's helping opening up this third eye, but it's only opening the door for you. It's not taking you the rest of the way, and that's that's the that's the limitation that it has. Okay. So, that, that makes a lot of sense, and that does. You can you can you can do what some shamans do, and then they when they smoke it, they smoke it in a ritualistic ceremonial way, and they create an atmosphere that is uh, giving um, more credence. It's just the same thing when you sit down to do a ritual, whether it be with a cocoa or a cacao, sorry, or some other thing where you're honoring the plant, you honor 
It is a teacher. You ask for information to be taught. You sit down in a sort of create a sacred space and then go on that sort of journey. That's a different way to do it. But again, it will take you only to a certain, certain place. So use it as the teacher. Honor it when you do it. But we would say sitting around and just smoking, you're missing really the point of it. It can you can do so much more with it. So I'm, I'm hearing uh, intention is very, very. Intention is everything. Yeah. Intention um, is everything, and even in mantra, intention is everything. You can say Om, but if you don't have the intention behind it, you're never going to get exactly what you could get out of it because it's a vibration. So you're tuning into the vibration of this plant, who has a, which has a consciousness, and we were talking earlier about consciousness. The job of that plant has. You know, there's many things that are in the spectrum of the consciousness of the plant. It has the ability to heal you. Within cannabis, there's a whole system. Your your physical body has a whole cannabinoidal system. We don't know if you know that, but all of the different things, the THC, the the uh, all the other things that are, that are there, the CBA, the CBO, all of these things. They have different correspondence within your body, and they will come in and balance those things in your body if used correctly. Hmm. So, Very that's, interesting. That's a, that. that's a medicine part of the plant. But there's a teacher part of the plant as well. And if you come in and you honor that, then you will get much further. But we would say again that it's, it's just the door opening and it's not going to take you as far as you can go. You know, there's a, there's a reason that the gurus in India, they can sit there on a mountain and they can take handfuls of LSD and feel nothing because they're already there in that bliss. They don't need it to get there. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Thank you. Um, Thank you. On, on the same topic, uh, I have another question about, so if I were to get my hands on some like DMT, would that set a benchmark for me to kind of cool, like? We would never recommend to you to do DMT in the smoking way. Oh, okay. Why is that? We would say to you because it's not, it's, it's, it's stripped from the plant. It's stripped from the ayahuasca, it's stripped from the teacher, and you're talking about a chemical ingestion, and it will only take you to a certain way, certain point, and it won't take you long enough. If you're going to do something like ayahuasca, you actually literally go on a journey, and you are greeted by the goddess ayahuasca, and she takes you on a journey, and she teaches you. When you, when you smoke DMT, you go into a state, and you rush in, and then you are literally left. There's huh. nothing. You will see it. And then you won't be able to get there. Fascinating. It is, it is a waste of time. Okay. Well, if you're yeah. going to do ay ayahuasca and honor it and go through the journey of it and greet it as a teacher and, and visualize it as, as a journey that you will take that is your heart's desire to do it and you go there with a purpose to learn, you will have a very incredible experience. And then once you've experienced it, you will be able to go back there again and again and again through meditation and you will never truly have to do ayahuasca again. Awesome. Yeah, you Ayahuasca is there to be your teacher. And you can also contact ayahuasca through meditation, though a lot of people have a hard time doing that. Is, is their it first more, time by their by themselves? Is it more so, difficult to do that than a normal meditation? To contact ayahuasca in meditation? Correct. No. It's not more difficult, but it's a deep, it's a deep place. You have to really go inside. So we're not saying to you that you have to do ayahuasca to do it, but we are saying that it teaches you what it is you're looking for okay. and yeah. how to approach it. There's a reason that shamans do this. There's a reason why shamans teach people to do this because ayahuasca is truly a teacher and it is a, it is not a, um, ayahuasca is a living being it is a it is a is an entity and it is there to teach and it is there to offer you that teaching and you only have to ask it but through the ritual you will make contact with that dmt is like oh, it's a waste of time <laughs> it's a waste okay. of time you can take you can take an ayahuasca journey that will take 12 hours and it will be an eternity and you can take a dmt journey that will be three minutes and be anticlimactic <laughs> and not worth your time 
we would, we would really say that. And also to the DMT in and of itself as it's been extracted and has been concentrated and how they have to do it, you will physically damage your, your lungs. And that's wow. it. Okay, thank you. That's uh, super insightful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. How are you? Hello? Hello. One moment, please. Hi, this is David. Hi, David. I have two questions. One is about how I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling kind of weak and stressed, and my heart seems to be beating a little faster than normal. Are you eating? Uh, I had a tooth pulled and I've been eating really light and I feel kind of weak and this morning I just feel really, I don't feel so good. Well, we think that you should eat something. We, you'll feel better. We I'm think you wondering. should drink some water and you will, you need to eat a good meal and drink some water. Well, I had eggs and a little bit of almond butter, um, but that doesn't seem to have helped. You need some carbohydrates. Um, have a banana well, and have some bread. Will the food get stuck in the, the tooth? How is the area of the gum? How, how much can I eat right now? Are you able to tell that? No. Okay. You're just going to have to be very careful. And okay. if you can, you need to go and get your tooth taken care of. Oh, it's the tooth's been pulled. It's just okay. the area it's healing right now. Okay, very good. Um, but eat something have, because what we sense is that you're weak, and your weakness is the result of not eating. Okay. And it's a very um, simple fix. So just eat more. Eat okay. something with substance to it. Eat something with some some substance to it and that will that will soothe you. We would say to eat some bread. There's no if you're eating eggs and you're eating butter, you're eating something that's protein that will go through your system quite quickly and it's not going to really satiate you. You need something like a carbohydrate that will re refill your glucose stores and give you some satisfaction. You could have some toast with some butter and some jam or some toast with banana, but that would give you, it's more, we would rather you eat something like a, a carbohydrate that will give you a more satiated feeling. Okay. And, um, and drink another water. one. Thank you. And another one is about... Um, uh, recovery after abduction and, and uh, moving through, um, getting through things. Like, what would you suggest? Um, Have there was you like, recently abducted? It's been quite a few years, six years. There, there was an implant and it did last for like four years of, of experience. Well, we'll just say this isn't really our area of expertise. So we don't really want to offer anything in this way um, because this is something that we don't, participate in and we don't really focus on so how is this affecting you that's our question um it's it's pretty good now but it's just still every once in a while it's uh <clears throat> it's challenging so i was just looking for some kind of guidance to move well, what through. is it what is it that it's happening what is it how are how is it manifesting in your experience um, there'll just be situations that will be, um, don't be cryptic, be direct. We want specific information so that we can specifically give you an answer. Okay. Um, just fear comes up in certain situations that, um, hold me back from doing things, from taking action and moving forward. Sp specifically what? Um, Nothing's coming to me right now. Well, when you're feeling the fear, the one thing we can say to you to do is to try to ground yourself, and you can do that through breathing, and you can you can do that through your meditation to just try to, to remind yourself that you are indeed safe, that you are indeed in control, and that you are in charge of yourself. So that would be the best thing to do. Are you Are you continuing to experience these abductions or not? No. No. So has it been a, a long time since you have been, you said about six years? Yeah. 
So do you have more of a confidence that when you go to sleep or when you are alone that you're not going to experience this? Was this always during your sleep time? No, I was actually awake. Um, okay. So and, you have more of an experience that this isn't happening anymore. Right, yeah. It's been at least two years, two to three years recovering and healing from that. Okay. So what we can only say to you is just to remind yourself that right now you are not experiencing that and that you can just take a deep breath and just remind yourself that you are safe and then trust that that safety will continue even after that breath so there's no point in you not taking steps in your own life how is it keeping you from doing other things what is that fear what is the fear specifically stopping you from doing um Sometimes uh, physical activities, like uh, um, any any kind of cardio type of pushing myself in cardio, when the heart speeds up. So your fear of abduction is keeping you from working out. It's not a fear of abduction. I'm just talking about the experiences that happened afterwards, recovering and and how my body had reacted while I had the, the implant. Okay, but now that it's gone, you're not having the, that reaction? Um, not as much anymore. Just, you know, just, um, you know, worries, just things that I have to overcome. It's like okay. PTSD. Like well, we understand what it is, but we're, just, we're trying to get him to express it as well. It's good that you know what is happening with him, but it's, it's more important that he knows what's happening with him. So, David, what we would say to you is that you have to take baby steps and you have to set little goals for yourself. And we would do this in a very um, practical way. That's the word we're saying. We would sit down and we would, we would set not 10 goals for yourself, but just two goals for yourself for, for a week. And two things that you have been previously unable to do, we would make those the goal. So if the goal is to walk outside and walk around for 15 minutes, then maybe that needs to be the goal. And if the goal is to walk around for 15 minutes, then we would start with a minute. And then we would start building on it from there. We, we think what, what you really would benefit from is some sort of behavioral uh, therapy in a way so that you give yourself little goals that are achievable so that you can slowly start to venture out of your comfort zone. Because what's happened is you've moved back and you've encapsulated yourself in, a, in what you consider to be a safe zone. But you know that in order for you to achieve whatever it is you wanna achieve, you have to move out of it. So we can't define these for you because you know the things that are holding you back. You know that your own limitations and we would, ask you to look at them and say, okay, these are the things that I'm not able to do now and make a list of those and then pick, pick one or two of them or even just one so that it's not too much and it's not overwhelming and take little steps to get there. Take yeah, little steps to do things. So give us one example of something that you are not able to do. What I'm recalling is, is just like the thought processes. Like I'll, I'll think about something and then I'll have a thought that I that I shouldn't do it, like just in my head, and it's just like keeping me from doing something that that I should, you know, should be able to okay. do. Okay. Okay, but what you're you speak in very broad strokes, and we would like you to start being a little more specific, because we only need you to achieve one thing, because once you achieve that one thing, it'll it'll filter down into the rest of other things. So, we'll give you an exercise for now a sort of homework, if you will. And we would like you to write down five things that you can't do, that you wanna do that you can't do. And not in, this, not in this session, but write down five things that you want to do that you can't do. And if you send an email to Karen, then together you guys can pick one or two and lay out a few steps to start doing them. Because 
what we see and we've interacted you with you many times and this is an ongoing thing for you and it's not to say that it's not good to have these interactions but what we were saying is that we want to give you very practical ways to solve some of your things because it can be solved very practically some of this can be but it won't happen in one moment but it but you can take steps and we think it's very important for you to be involved in your own expansion in that way it's not so much anymore about telling you stuff about you it's not so much about telling you what these energies are or whatever it really doesn't matter so much what matters is that you are able to move forward regardless of the circumstance regardless of the energies regardless of what you're perceiving things like eating are very important self-care is very important and we notice with you that you ne ne you neglect yourself and we would like you to start making yourself a priority in that your health a priority your eating a priority your rest a priority your your cleanliness a priority your order of your your house a priority those basic things are your basic needs and you need to make your basic meet your basic needs before you're able to do all the other stuff those things have to be met you have to feel comfortable in your world you have to feel comfortable in your home you have to feel comfortable in yourself so that you can start doing the other stuff so if you will write down five things that you want to do and don't make them big don't make them i want to make them basic the, the most basic things that you're saying that you are having a hard time do write them down and then let's see about trying to get you into overcoming some of them if you agree yes. that's our offer to you to help you with that and it would be our great pleasure to help you with that yes thank you thank you michelle and uh, i so okay. just find her email later we will we will at the end of the when karen comes back she will type it to you okay but, okay Thank you. Much love. Love and light. Much love. Thank you. Um, up next is my Alshina. We didn't hear what you said. Up next is my friend Alishina sitting here with me. We Hello. told Karen about him earlier. We had an experience on the river this week. Greetings, Theo. Thank you Greetings. for uh, receiving my inquiry. Um, we are happy to receive your inquiry. So very formal he is. Ultimately, I really feel like I, the answer lies within my own heart. I've, long story short, I've just recovered from major life trauma, sexual abuse, and I've really come back into my body, and um, which means actually experiencing my heart for the first time, really probably that I can consciously remember. Um, so I'm in this giant sacred heart expansion, very connected to the Christ lineage. and. I've, I've been I'm an aspiring musician, so my life's purpose is to get my music out to the world. But right now, that's not creating financial abundance because I'm working on creating that. And I've been praying for guidance and help to support myself financially. And I've tried. Um, so I've been to Peru. I've worked with shamans for the past eight years. And I've unsuccessfully, in the past two years, created a, a spiritual life coaching practice. I've been trying to do that for two years. And, um, I had this realization recently that part of the reason is because I actually don't like doing the work. I'm very qualified and I'm connected to a lot of beautiful energy, but I realize it doesn't actually excite me. And I've just had this new insight into doing graphic design and web design, which is actually is something that really inspires my inner artist and my inner creative. And it pulls me out of the heaviness of all the, the realms that I've been in for the past like eight years of doing a lot of deep sure. doing work on myself. So really this, the inquiry is to open to guidance and, how this joyous fairy spirit of mine can really be in alignment with my highest value gifts to bring financial abundance while I bring my bigger purpose into the world, my healing music. Well, we think you answered your own question. Um, we, we, can, uh, we can imagine that if you have gone through what you have gone through and you've now come out through the other side and you've spent an, an enormous amount of time exploring that and diving into that and letting it go and 
it may not be the most interesting thing to sit and listen to other people in that same space because then in fact you've never really gotten rid of it in a way so it kind of keeps pulling you back and you're you're done with that part of your life from what we understand so we can imagine that it's not that exciting if you find graphic arts exciting and it gives you energy when you think about it then we would say that is a very good way to go and that is you know, on a financial basis, you can make a very good living and you can give some balance to your life. You will still be creating and then you will have more time to focus on just the music as opposed to trying to always make a living from it, which puts a different kind of pressure on it. And then as you're more free in that and you can relax more into that, then more jobs will come because you already have created a stream of abundance for yourself. So follow the thing that gives you joy and if that gives you joy and you feel excited about it that's really all that that you can do right. so everyone doesn't have to because they have an ex spiritual experience move into the spiritual world as a job we just want to say that you know there's plenty of things a creativity in music or creativity and art is, is is valuable and you can also use those streams of consciousness to create beautiful things that will impact the world and you're still adding very very valuable part to yourself so if something like counseling makes you feel tired and you think oh i don't really want to deal with this stuff then definitely don't do it that's a good knowing to have so there's there's formulas for how to create abundance, but the easiest thing is to follow your excitement, truly follow your excitement. And when you find that it's not exciting, move away from it. We, we, we spend a lot of time training ourselves to do something and then we keep thinking it has to work, it has to work because I put this, excite I put this um, time in and you think, well, what was the point of it? Well, the point was the experience on the larger part. So if, if the graphic arts feels good for you, then that's what you really need to do. And you just need to approach it with a joy and you need to approach it with the idea of this is really going to give me what I want. And when you do that, your eyes open in a certain way. You start to look for and experience opportunities that you wouldn't have done in the past. And the other thing is, is that you really need to focus on what you know it will bring you, as opposed to, I hope it'll bring me something. So see and visualize yourself with a job, with, with a good paying job, with a job that you enjoy, with people around you that you enjoy doing, with the work that you enjoy creating. Mm -hmm. And do the same thing with your music, you know. And, and if you can sort of take away the, let's say, pressure of having to create a living, maybe not being able to take gigs that don't pay so much, but maybe will give you some good potential future jobs or making a CD under a time pressure, having to pay for a CD that you're making when you're not making any money. And then you can really dive into the creativity of it and have that be your true focus. Then much more is going to come out of it. So we think you already know, and we think you already answered your own question and you've come to the right conclusion. There's nothing that says that if you're an artist, you can also be, if you're a musician, you can also be a graphic artist. There's nothing that says that if you're a musician, you can also be a baker. It, it is not necessarily that you're, it doesn't mean that you're not a musician if you're also a baker. It's and, and, not and, or. So, you know, not everybody who is making music makes a living out of it. There is a tipping point that does come, but you might find that, that that's not really what you want anyway. Do you wanna live on the road? Do you wanna do all those things? Those are the things that, that you have if you're a musician that you have to do, and that lifestyle is not for everybody. So there might be the part of you that also knows that. Think about what you really value in your life and in your world and what you really want your life to look at. Start thinking at it from that perspective. How do I, if I, if I wake up every day, what is it that I want to be doing? You know, and if, it, if, and if you know that, then you can start gearing your life so that those things happen. 
so that you don't put so much pressure that I've got to make a living doing music, only doing music. Because then you're focused on the living part of it. You're not focused on the music part of it. So, I hope that helps you. Absolutely. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Very clear. Thank you very much. Namaste. Does anyone else have any questions? Yes, Christine. Hello, Christine. Um, hello. Hello. Uh, greetings and blessings. Greetings and blessings. Um, I'm having um, a problem with um, getting emotionally um, charged by hearing this news or that news or I don't listen to the news anymore that much. But, um, when people who are in the spiritual world, other channelers or something like that, I try to stay in that type of news. Um, when they say something, gets, I go off emotionally. I, I charge in the wrong direction. I take them at what they say. In what way? Please give us an example. Okay. One particular channel channeler channeled right after um, the uh, guy in Vegas who was shooting all those people and she came up with this thing about how he was misled and how he was forced to do it and all this and that whatever and I'm getting all upset and everything about wow the injustice of um, these uh, black ops who force people through blackmail to do this and that then another channeler comes in and uh, is channeling the same person and this person is saying oh no I did it all on my own I, I this is what I wanted to do this is what I'm in this world for so it's sort of like uh, that's the latest others are if I see somebody abusing um, another person or creature or whatever um, I go off on a tangent before I even know the whole story and I this is what's been happening a lot. So I've been withdrawing myself from interacting with people because their stories are very traumatic. And I don't know what to do with that emotion. Well, we would just, first of all, we will address some of the, uh, the things that you were talking about first. When it comes to channeled information, um, we're hearing some feedback, if you can maybe. Sorry. Um, this is our stance, and this is the conversation we've had with Karen many times. And this is why we don't um, talk too much about uh, what you can say, conspiracy theories or things like that. It's, it's a very dark thing. It's a very dark mentality to focus upon. And regardless of how it happened or why it happened, you had a lot of people die and you had a lot of people hurt and you had a lot of things going on. And again, we can already hear people saying, yes, but what about the government and what about this? Those things are, whether you know exactly as they are or not, they are what they are. There may be a government conspiracy, there may not be. The thing that is very clear is that this incident led to the loss of life. It led to a lot of pain for a lot of people. So we would say focus on the solution to that. The solution to that being better understanding between people, maybe some uh, criteria that will prevent this in the future. It's a call to get involved. It's a call to come together. It's a call to have compassion. It's a call to your own understanding of how you want the world to be. We would take it from that standpoint because that's the things that you can really affect. It doesn't make sense to get a lot of anger and to dive into fear because it won't solve anything for you. It spirals you down. It spirals you into less knowing. It spirals you into less love. So if your choice and your desire is to be at peace and to be in love, then you will look at things from the perspective of, okay, this has happened. 
what can I do? Karen reads a lot of the Facebook and she just turns it off because it also triggers her. She thinks, why does everybody have to insult each other constantly? And why is this, um, well, why is this happening basically? And it's gotten to the point now that nothing that happens is something that just happened. Nobody just dies. Nobody just, uh, you know, has anything happened. It's always they've been killed by the cabal. They've been killed by the Illuminati. Some people just die because they're old or they're sick. We want you to know that that is the process of life and not everything is a conspiracy and not everything is a black op or a red flag or whatever you call it, a false flag. Some things just happen. Now, we're not making a comment on this last event. We're only just saying sometimes it's not important who did it, but what's important is your reaction to it. And that's the only part of it that you can control. And the other, other thing that you can control is what do you do next? So we would offer to you that when something occurs and it starts to trigger you, and we want to hear your response, so please unmute your mic. But what we tell Karen to do is to take a deep breath whenever she sees something. And whenever she sees something that starts to trigger her, because she can react very quickly in anger, because things really anger her at times, because things sometimes are so unjust and so un so cruel and so unfathomable. But the mastery is to become the observer of it to acknowledge the fact that it makes you angry, to acknowledge the fact that you think that it's cruel, to acknowledge the fact that you think that it is wrong, and then let it go. And that can happen in a split second. So what we would offer to you to do, this is what we want you to hear, Okay. is we would like you to take a deep breath as soon as you see it, and just say, hmm, I'm noticing that this is what's happened. I'm seeing that this is what's happened. What do I think about that? Not to react to it, not to emotionally respond to it, but to notice it. And the way that you notice it is in the moment that you it is brought in front of you, in the moment the news comes, take a deep breath. Just stop. Breathe in and just say, hmm. That hmm is grounding. That hmm pulls your energy down. Hmm, it's a sound. Hmm, and it pulls you right down. It's an earth sound. It grounds you right away. Hmm. I'm noticing this is what happened. What do I think about that? Not what do I feel about it? What do I think about it? We want you to observe it. We don't want you to feel it. We want you to observe it. We know that when something is terrible, the reaction is horror. We know that when you something is terrible and you feel that you're in danger, the reaction is normally fear. We know that when something happens, the reaction is immediate in the fact of I've got to get away or I don't like this or I, I want to shield myself from this or I want to scream at it or I want to you know, stop it. But what we want you to do is to train yourself to not do that. We want you to train yourself to observe it. And the only way that you observe it is that you step back from it. And that hmm, that deep breath, and that hmm pulls you back and it grounds you. It puts your feet back on the ground and you can notice it. And when you notice it, you can say, hmm, what do I think about that? I think that this situation needs me to send love. I think that this situation needs me to get involved in politics. And I think that this situation needs me to write a letter to my friend, or whatever your reaction is. But we want your reaction to be one of noticing and not one of feeling. Does that make sense? Because the feeling that you should have should be the love that you want to give to the situation, not the hate or the fear or the anger that you feel. We want your first your knee-jerk reaction to be compassion and not fear. Your knee-jerk reaction should be love. And if, if, it, if you can't step back immediately, just keep breathing in and keep hmming and keep breathing in and keep hmming. 
The knee-jerk reaction that we all should have in any situation should be love. It shouldn't be fear. It should be love. So. Okay. Well, okay, but we hope that helps you. Um, yes, it does. Okay. I try we to like the report all... to in the future for how that works for you. If they okay. Okay. We would like um, you to have an at, example. At, hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at night, one of the ways that I try to change that thought pattern is by listening to Om at mm -hmm. night yeah. so that I can go to sleep because I don't sleep. Um, but um, it still is disturbing that emo I still get emotional knee-jerk reacts reactions sure. instead well, of it's the... It's a practice. It's a practiced response. It's a practice. Okay. And and just practice you know, makes practice makes perfect, and it's an ongoing thing. And you'll find that once you master one thing, then you'll have to apply it to another thing and another thing. It's an ongoing okay. thing. So don't okay. be too hard on yourself about it. But we also want you to have relief from it, so that you don't have to dive into yeah. it. When you dive into it, then you hang out with all the trolls and all the people who are making just the the most ugly comments ever. They're ugly to each other. They're ugly in their thought. They're ugly in their wishes. And it's not, that doesn't help anything. It just propagates what is and is probably the reason that this is the result of the way. All of this, all of this cumulative hate and fear has manifested in a gunman that has shot all of these people. So we don't need to create the next person coming along. We need and to come with a solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. We're both. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Typhus joining us from YouTube. Typhus 84 would like to hear a little bit about the indigos, where they came from. Um, he or she would like to know if they are what people call incarnated angels. I'm going to go ahead and add this last one and you choose what you want to talk about. And if you can comment on any keys that indigos hold and how one can access them and use them. Thank you. Well, indigos by definition are not angels. They are a conscious more conscious human being born. They're a, a group of children being born between, and, and we don't know the exact dates because this isn't something that we focus on too much, but it's, it's the last sort of wave. So it's the children now that are coming up into their 20s and their 30s that were born um, with a higher awareness than say the people that came before them. And they have and you can see the results in the world now, they are resistant to authority in the way that it is because a lot of the authority that has been put out has been very stagnant and been very, <clears throat> we won't say detrimental, but it is very much needed to be changed in order for human, humanity to progress. So they're more open to uh, community. They're more open to everyone being equal, whether it be that they are straight or gay or um, pansexual or any of the um, the terms that are being used now, there's a more all-encompassing awareness of just a person is a person and a person is to be loved and things that don't make sense, I don't want to follow them. That's the mentality of an indigo. They're resistant to what we would call stupid authority, things that are, are shouldn't be rules that don't make sense, they refuse to follow. And they don't like to follow any rules that don't make sense. And they will actively stand up against them and resist them. So that's what an indigo child, though they're not little children now, these are young adults that are moving around. And that is sort of their purpose, is to help break down, the cat is now coming to visit us. They, they will, they've come to break down these hierarchies that exist, the systems that exist. So there are a lot of abilities that come with 
the indigos, a lot of them tend to be empaths. They tend to be more conscious. They're channeling more easily than, say, the people that were their predecessors, and they're more in tune. They have a bigger awareness. So, but indigos don't necessarily have power. The best thing for any indigo to do is to become aware of who they truly are so that they can fully express themselves in that way. So that's the best answer we can give you, and we hope that's what you're looking for. I think that's perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, there is Lily Pad Paula from YouTube also was wondering if um, the, if you would be able to explain a dream she had the other night. Okay, we will try. Um, we weren't there. <laughs> right? Yes. Lily Pad Paula. So she uh, said in the dream that... Um, she was scared and hiding from other people because they wanted the skull amulet she was wearing. And then she woke up. Well, we hope she didn't give it to them. <laughs> we don't really have an answer for her other than we can only, we can only tell you that Karen, and this is not the same, but it's, similar that she is finding lately very lately in the last several weeks she is having very very uh, clear dreams where she's very busy with certain things and she's finding that she's very busy in that sleep time and she's doing a lot of things and it seems like she's having a whole other life in that dream time we would say that, yes, she's tuning into another one of her aspects of herself, an aspect of her, an aspect actually of us, of existence. And she's observing that life. She's not actually living that life in her dreams, but she's observing another lifetime that is her. And we would say the same thing to you, that you were not necessarily what we pick up, that this skull amulet was not necessarily from this time, but maybe from another time, and that you were the keeper of it and the protector of it, and there were people that wanted it. Now, whether this was happening exactly now or it's a memory of something that happened in the past, we would say that this is definitely an alternative lifetime. So with all time being now, it is now, but that's a little too complicated. We would just say that it's an alternative lifetime that you're being able to observe. And there's always a reason why you're being allowed to observe things. And the universe is very smart in this because they don't give it to you for nothing. They give it to you a lot of times just to let you know that there's something more, that there's something more than what you're experiencing right now. It's very important for us to know that we're multidimensional beings, that we have many different incarnations and we have many different lives. So I would take that as one of the knowings of, yes, I have this other part of me that protects skull amulets. And then the other thing is for you to start reaching out to that consciousness and to get to know another side of yourself. So remember as much as you can about that person, how they were, how they looked. Try to get a sense of the time period, the place that they were the kind of person they were so that you can tune into it. We talked earlier about consciousness going through DNA streams, that you can tune in through that. Everything that is a part of you is really a receptor and a, and a receiver. So part of your DNA stream, part of your consciousness stream, you also have a spiritual DNA. It's not just your physical DNA, but you also have a, a, a consciousness DNA that's part of your soul DNA. And so that person will be in your soul DNA and you can tune into them and get to know them. So if you've had any questions about your future lives, your parallel lives, your past lives, that is an indication of it. So tune into it and get to know this person. Start any information that comes, write it down. If you get the name, if you get the place, it doesn't really matter. What's important is that you, that you write it down and, and, and get some of that information for yourself so that you can start to understand more of who you are because you're not just this person here you're a lot of different people
and it's fun for you. And it's a great gift you've been giving, given. So enjoy that. So that's our answer in 20 words or less. <laughs> we think we're coming to a conclusion. So we can take one more question, but this will be the last one if there is any more. There's a uh, Wang uh, Arnaz. Um, his first time draining. He's on YouTube, and he would like to. His first time draining. Joining, joining, joining. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he would like to get some sense of where soul origins are. He wants to know his purpose, but I told him you never tell him that. So. <laughs> well. Thank you for that. We, we have a very lovely cat who's reaching out to us, so we're going to pet it. This is the cat monkey, and he's very, very lovely. Um, the reason that we don't tell you your sole purpose is because we don't believe in telling someone about their selves. We believe that that is something you are to discover. And it's very important. It'll never be real for you until you know it within yourself. And we wouldn't trust us to tell you something about you and what you're supposed to do. We don't want that trust and we don't, we don't, we would never offer it. So that's the reason. And, and it's, it's, we believe it's an honorable reason. Um, when it comes to soul origins, what is the question? Um, he wanted to know where his soul originated. But well, we talked about it earlier. Souls originate. Everything has originated from the original oneness. Right. Everything, and we've, we've had this conversation a lot in the last few days, and it's expanding every time we have it. So we, we're quite pleased to, to share as much with you as we can. Everything that was, or everything that is, is. It's all there. It was all there. In in one concentrated thing but that concentrated thing was everything there was nothing outside of it because it was everything and we really need people to understand that one means one it doesn't mean two it doesn't mean three it doesn't mean half of one it's not sort of this and sort of something out there one is all all nothing more nothing outside it, and within the allness of everything that is, is everything, including nothing. So let your mind deal with that for a moment. But as everything has been created, it has been expelled from the divine. Not expelled in a way that it has separated from it, but it has originated from it. You have originated, every soul has originated from God or from all that is. That is where the soul comes from, and it comes in a consciousness stream. And within your consciousness stream is your oversoul and, and the, everything. And then within the oversoul, the oversoul is also creating an, ex, an ex expressing stream. So you are the stream of consciousness of your oversoul, and your oversoul is, is, but it's all within one stream, the stream of consciousness of all that is. So you are originating from God, ultimately. And that's where you come from. That's where we all come from. That's where everything comes from. There's nothing that doesn't originate there. There's nothing that isn't part of that. So we hope that answers you a little bit. But you are part of everything. And you are part, but you're not everything. That's, we were, we were, We've, we've had a hard time explaining to Karen about the idea of being God because she always said, well, a lot of people walk around and say, I'm God, and, but you are not God. You are part of God. You are an expression of God, but you are not the totality of God, and that is why you do not have God-like powers. You have what's within your, your stream, which is infinite, but it's not all realizable at this stage of your incarnation because that's part of this incarnation to have these limitations, to have these things that are impossible to do. So, But you are part of infinity. You are part of the all that is. 
and you will never not be part of it and you will never not be you will always be not necessarily in your physical body but your stream is an ever expanding infinite stream and you are part of that thank you so much Theos. thank you so So wanted to wind that down, right? Well, is there any more questions? If there are, then we can maybe take one more, but we are we are starting to the body's fatiguing now. I did have a question if, if you wanted to. Okay. Um just about any guidance that would help me move forward with creating more abundance of better financial stability because I keep running out of money for food and um, so any kind of guidance with that although I've asked this a few times I still am in the situation well the answer is still the same the answer is that you need to go and, and, and find a, a job and it doesn't matter in this point because of where you are what that job is we hope that you find something we want you to look for something that you would enjoy but again like we said to the musician it doesn't matter if you're a musician and a graphic artist or a musician and a baker you can still do the things that you feel that you're supposed to do quote unquote with healing and then you can also provide income for yourself and the simplest answer is always the true one and the truest answer is you need to find employment now and that hasn't changed so our question more to you is what are you doing to do that um yeah i need to do well i have to get a social security card and get a resume together okay then that should be I, your first I've gone to a few places but didn't get any responses i'm okay. back so your first step for the social security card that's very practical and you can execute that and we would say to you to do that that it should be part of your list of the things that you need to do we want you to approach things every very very logistically and very very logically right now and not try to make them too big to make them as simple as possible and to take tiny little steps because your whole world will change if you give yourself a little bit of the gift of stability that's that's what you need now so it's you shouldn't be thinking about doing big big things right now it's the little things that need to be done and we would encourage you to do those so be make your list of what you need to do what are the most what are the most realizable things and do that first can i ask you about the the my current state i've, I've had the bread and i still my heart is still beating kind of faster than normal and I just feel uncomfortable. Well, if you start to consider, cons if you continue to feel uncomfortable, you may need to go to the doctor and have them look at you. Okay. Mm -hmm. and don't hesitate if you start to really feel stressed. Are you feeling, are you feeling panicked, or are you, or you feel that this is something very physically happening to you in a, in a detrimental way? Mm, I just feel a little stressed because it's, it's how I used to feel when I went through um recovering from what happened and um it's just uh, i just don't like the feeling well if you can sit in meditation and try to center yourself and just take some deep breaths and just focus on yourself on your breath and give yourself the opportunity to maybe find on youtube and very nice relaxation meditation and do that and see if that helps you and if it doesn't yeah. help you then maybe you also need to check yourself for some physical ailment okay. because we can't we can't even in our advice we can't do it for you and we can't help you really from here we can only just offer you the advice of taking care of yourself in the best way that you okay. can okay yes thank you okay. much love to you Hello, Michelle. 
Thank you so much for sharing your love. Thank you. Well, we just want everyone to know that um, love is who you are. And there's been uh, several themes of things that we've talked about today. And one of the biggest things is to not be triggered by the world as much as possible. And that comes from really going inside and living from your heart. And we gave some examples of how to step back and to become an observer of it. We also say to you that the the things that you experience should be not thrust upon you, but you should become the master of them. So any input that you have, it's more important that you are able to observe it rather than just experience it and, and have to deal with it. So take that step back and to observe what you're saying and choose your reaction to it. And we would also say to you that work for the place that your knee-jerk reaction becomes love, that your knee-jerk reaction is compassion, that you look for the things that you can do to affect the change in the world that you want. And it may be just you speaking out how you want the world to be and starting to live your life as if the world is that so that you can start to create it. So we wish everyone an amazing time and we wish you much love. Namaste. 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 It is pouring down rain. <laughs> that was beautiful as usual. Oh, thank you. I had a lot of animal noise and a lot of, you don't know, but they were jumping on me through the whole thing. <laughs> My dog, I think, he kept coming on this side of me and pulling me. And then here's my little one back, and she was behind me going, oh, oh, <laughs> And the cat in one moment was hitting me in the face with the tail. It was crazy. Yeah, Theos is pretty good at handling the animals, though. Well, they, they like the animals, and they, I think the cat especially really likes him. The energy was interesting because the dog was really, really just – playing and they were jumping and 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 i i did turn my body but i didn't see them um i didn't know what was happening but mm -hmm. they were really really expressive <laughs> so i apologize if through the whole thing that you hear this little tapping of little feet or whatever it's, really it's really dark in here now too yeah. mm. so i was gonna offer um it's still recording Yes, we are still, yes, recording. We're still recording. Yes, I wanted to uh, ask if anyone wanted to offer a blessing. Does anyone time. want to offer a blessing? Is there anyone out there? I would like to offer a blessing. Okay, Pete. Okay. okay. Offer away. Here. Are you on your camera or not? Oh no, I'm off camera. Okay. Well, then you can then I can look at me while you offer your blessing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, just, just in conclusion, um, this week has been really terrible for humanity as far as all this stuff that's gone on. Just as much as you can. Just send as much love as you can to whomever no matter what their beliefs are, whether they're, you know, right, left, up, down, blue, green, or whatever. Just send love. The love is the only thing that's going to change anything. And 
you can't shout someone into love. So love them into love. Love yourself. Love humanity. Oh. Um, you know, Theos actually said, don't help create the next person with your feelings. Right. With your anger and your judgment. Also, yeah. That does that thing. Yeah. I thought that was really important. That, yeah, that. I want to go back and listen to that because I, I, I was I yeah. was kind of I was I didn't know they were gonna go there. That was interesting, yeah. That's what I always tell people. Like you realize when you send out hate, you're creating more hate, right? Yeah. So, anyway. yeah focus on uh, do you know Louise Kay? She's a channeler and she she and I are becoming pretty good friends. She lives here in Holland and we hang out sometimes and she uh, said the other day and and, and she said it because she really gets it. She says, I just don't focus on anything I don't want. And she really, really doesn't. Like, she really, really doesn't. Yes. And I thought, wow, wow. She really, really knows. And she knows it, like, you know. Yeah. The bigger picture. <laughs> she knows it all. Yeah, and she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't focus on it. And uh, she, has a, she has a very beautiful outlook on stuff. And so don't focus on anything you really don't want. If, if it's even when it's horrible, just focus on what you want. Focus on what you want. Hear it, notice it, say, okay, this this shows me that I need to focus on that. Yes. And also, know. let's ask ourselves, uh, what's it reflecting back to me that I need to work on? I don't think you should do that. No? No. I, 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 I've come to the conclusion, no. Because okay. it just, because it makes you judge everything, and especially yourself. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't really matter. If you let go of something and you say, I'm going to shift my consciousness to what I want, don't dive into the minutia of the minutia. It just makes you, it just pulls you into the muck and keeps you there. You know, just focus on what you want. It doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if in the past you were a three-toed, triple-eyed, double-jointed dinosaur. <laughs> you know? That's a child song. It's a child song. Do you know the song? I don't. Huh? It was a guy in Maryland when I was a little kid. He used to go to the schools. I think his name is Barry Singinger, and he used to make these great songs for kids. And one of them was, I'm a three-toed, triple-eyed, double-jointed dinosaur with warts up and down my back. I eat shiny automobiles, tow, tow trucks and airplanes. I like to munch on railroad tracks. So anyway, <laughs> that's the song. I never forgot it. But anyway, don't focus on the past because the past is the past and it's over. So the only thing that's keeping it in the present is you. In every moment, you can choose completely something different. And okay, yes, we have to understand our history and blah, blah, blah. But really, the, for the focus, for the healing of it, it's really not so important to, to dive into it and understand why. Because you're not li literally going to change it. What you're going to do, what you can do, though, is move towards something more if you want. You know, all this crap, I, and I'm starting to call it crap, this mirror stuff. It's just a way for, I think it, it's become a trap for us. What is they marrying to me? What does it say about me? Blah, blah. You know? <laughs> I just like to know what it is. I can send love and healing. Yeah. Well, send love to it anyway. You yeah, should be sending good. love out all the time. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm yeah. mirroring you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it was an analogy that served us. But I think it, I don't think it serves us anymore. I think it's become now it's become too much. It becomes even more isolation. It's I think it was supposed to stimulate the idea that you know you're only meeting yourself, so whatever you see is also part of you and everything. Okay, great, but focus on what you want. You'll change it that way anyway. So why why go through the pain and the hell of it again? You lived it once. Why do it again? Get over it. Just move on. Um, <laughs> la, 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 la. Huh? Webinar. Huh? I was just going to say thank you, everybody, for joining us. Oh, I can see you. <laughs> webinar. And, Here, let me turn you on. And we'll go there ahead and call it a day. Or night. It's or really night. dark here. <laughs> so much love, everybody. Thank much you. Much love to you. Us. Now, again, once again, Karen Newman can be found at aboutoneness.com for private questions. Right.
Yes. Uh, and just so you know, I'm going, I'll be, I'm, I've got a waiting list of about three weeks. So if you want to come in, you better, I'm booking for November. Booking for November. But. <laughs> they, they said to ask for your email? Yes. Can I gonna, talk to Theo? Okay, after we, we'll do that yes. right after we. It's also on my website, so it's no secret. It's info at about oneness.com. It's not, it's not even cryptic. There's, there's no encryption or codes or anything necessary. It's just. It's pretty straightforward. I wasn't that. I wasn't that creative. So, okay. You are in charge of the live button. So. Oh, I am. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you, and be sure to tune in next week. Uh, Jim Charles will be back. He'll be channeling. If you want to uh, join Hukulo, you can go to hukulo.org and to be part of the live broadcast. I guarantee you a spot in the room, and uh, you can find out about that and all the courses that are coming through and also the live retreats. So much love to you. I'll see you when I get back from Australia and uh, I'll see you again. Much love everybody. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye.